So hello, hello, and welcome to this uh, live stream. So today we are going to speak on how to build a network starting from zero. So um, I'm going to put like, I have put a lot of uh, personal uh, experience so, uh, in, this, uh, in this lesson. I think you, you, you will like it. Um, so what are we going to see? We are going to see uh, how to create a network offline how you can we can do it online and with two strategies the inbound strategies and the outbound strategies um for those that don't know what is it i will explain to you later and then at the end of the day, at the end of the lesson i will answer to any question that you have and also if you want to jump on the stream um i can share a link and you can come and say hi all right so let's do it so first is the offline way. So the old way, how people used to network. So um, so it, as you can see, this is as awkward as this. <laughs> it's uh, basically when you have a big or when you have like in the conferences and so on, and you don't know people, it's always a bit like odd and it feels like this. But this is how I started. This is how I used to do it. And I made a lot of business and I found maybe most of my clients and my supplier the old way, the offline way. So it completely works, even though it would, uh, and rather more for the young generation that are not used to <laughs> physical interaction now. Um, yeah, F speaking to people face to face work. It's maybe the most, it may be not the best use of your time because it, you don't really have leverage, but it's sti it still work. So the first way that you can meet people and create your network is by going to industry specific conferences. So here I have um, I put a, a pictures of the LME week. Last week it was the LME week. So this is a London Metal Exchange that basically invite all their um, all the people that have a broker account there. So there's like um, uh, there's like like a gala, some type of gala dinner conferences and so on. Um, and then everyone takes these weeks to 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 launch parties and so on to speak with their client, with their customer and so on. So then there is also another conference on the, another conference that I'll be there. It's a TX, uh, TXF in Geneva. This is basically a very specific conference that only speak about trade finance. I really don't know why they did the, uh, the illustration for this conference is the <laughs> uh, Stranger Things, the, the Netflix uh, series with the upside down universe. <laughs> it's, it's weird, but <laughs> is it maybe what what, what is the, the trade finance? Is the upside down universe? I, I, I don't know. But anyway, so conferences, this is a very, very good way and maybe maybe yeah, one of the best way to to start to uh, create a network. Then we have trade fair, trade shows and so on. This is how basically I got all of my customer. We used to have like a, a when I started at the Getty Trade, we used to have a booth. Uh, at the, the Gold Food Fair, and uh, yeah, but this is this is how I found most all of my customers. All of my new customers this is through this uh, this fair. So uh, I can tell you, it works. <laughs> so uh, for instance, for uh, food stuff, uh, or this is the, the four big conferences. We have Anuga in Germany, Cial in France, uh, Gold Food in Dubai, and uh, FHA in Singapore, if I'm not mistaken. So you need to go there for sure. Then. Uh, ah, so this is a picture of uh, myself. You can see I was younger, like maybe 10 years, no, yeah, maybe 10 years younger back then. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, Dubai Gold Food. And this is one of my, actually this guy what, 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 was one of my customers and a very, very story about him. I don't even remember his name, but he came to the, to the, to the trade fair with like 20,000 US dollar in his pocket. like. In liquid cash in his pocket. I I, I remember that because I, I mean he was he had a jeans and you know it was really tight and he had like all his money like in his pocket and he was like what the fuck and I'm like I was like what what are you doing with with the money? Like, yeah, I'm here to do the prepayment. I'm like what? <laughs> no, I mean, it doesn't work like that. What the fuck? <laughs> anyway, I remember this guy was uh, from Burkina Faso. Uh, very very funny guy, and also as you can see, he had, he had no uh, no uh, no no card. So usually to go to these conferences, you need to pay or you need to get invited. And even without like uh, the entrance or whatever, he, he could go got in. I don't know how he did that, but <laughs> anyway, yeah, he had twenty k in cash, like in cash and in US dollar, it's like hundred bills. So 
I mean, it takes a lot of, of, of room in his pocket. And he, he was ready to, to, to deal. He was ready to buy a container. Um, anyway, but that, that was a anyway, good story. Um, then the other uh, way that you can find um, that, that you can create a network is with those type of networking group. So it's like usually the association and so on. Here in Geneva, there is a Propeller Club. I think Propeller Club, there is like a lot of uh, chapters um, everywhere in the world. So you can see how you can go there to join. And there is also the CTA, the Commodity Trade Association. And every month, I think they have like a drink or an event or something like this. Um, if you are from a country that uh, doesn't have like a, a big uh, trading uh, uh, trading scene, I'm pretty sure that uh, you will find something for the for the shipping guy or for the, the industry that you are in. Um, you'll see there's always like a business association that you, you can go to, yeah, to, to network. And one hack, and I really, really encourage you to do it, is that uh, when I started in the, in the industry, I created this uh, association, the 80s Ship and Como. And it was basically like a, a, yeah, a networking group that I created. I just um, I basically organized meetups to have a drinks, you know, after work and so on, and to meet other people that was born in the 80s and that was working in the shipping and commodity field. So I created this uh, this association. And from that, I I mean, I got a lot, a lot of uh, contact that I, I still have today, actually. 10 years, don't, uh, don't, uh, even more than 10 years. Though. But uh, I don't know, not three, 10 years, like few years, anyway, few years down the road. Uh, and being the, at the node, at the center of a network is extremely powerful. So I would really encourage you to to do that. I mean, it's, it's not really complicated, to be honest, to, to I mean, just organize like a, a meetups and so on and make sure that people are there. Uh, usually if there's like a free drink or something like this, uh, people come because, you know, people, they, they like to drink for free. <laughs> and you can like have a deal with the bar. This is what I did a few times. They were, look, um, I'm going to bring like, I don't know, 20, 20, 25 people or 20 people in your bar. Just can we have like a free drink uh, and I make sure that I do the the the, um, the meetup uh, slow night. So usually I could easily like have a, a deal with them or something like this. So it doesn't even cost money, but it costs time. Anyway, so this is the old ways and it still works for sure. Now, let's speak about something with a, more, a bit more leverage, which is the online ways to create a network. So there is two ways of uh, creating a network online. There's outbound and inbound. So if you know a little bit uh, the lingo, uh, outbound and inbound is used for sales. And outbound sales is when you go get a customer. And inbound sales is when, when customer come at you. So we are going to see the, the, two, the two ways here. And instead of uh, a customer, we are talking about like a network. So getting peers or getting people. So first, what I want you to do is like, it's very easy. You go on LinkedIn, you copy past a message, and then you spam everyone no <laughs> of course no you don't do that uh, that was supposed to be a joke but it's maybe not that funny anyway so you don't fucking do that please don't copy past and send a fucking message on linkedin it doesn't work it's fucking awful i mean it's now now i don't know if i have like a small presence on linkedin so and by the way if you are not on LinkedIn, i encourage you to be because there is a lot of uh, interesting stuff for community and shipping and uh I mean, now every day I've got like those spammy, spammy contacts or spammy message on LinkedIn. So it's very annoying. Anyway, so don't do that. So how do you, how can you correctly do an inbound? So connect with someone and then have a meaningful conversation with him and so on. So what you need to do is you need to provide value first. So that means that you need to provide value to the guy before asking anything, even if you just ask for like a, just a quick call or whatever, you need to provide value first. So I know for the for a lot of you that have like low digit uh, IQ, um, you you are saying like, oh, but how can I provide value? Blah, blah, blah. To people, it's like, hey, if you don't know how you can provide value to someone, don't reach out to him. That's fucking much it. You need to be a bit clever. You need to think a little bit out of the box. So I will give you a few examples. So first, uh, if you have seen this video, uh, basically you, you can go after and uh, or I think there is a link uh, in the description below. Um, this is a video where basically I send this boot, I put this boot in a box and I send this box to um, 
to uh, the CEO of Mercuria. If you don't know Mercuria, uh, Marco Dunant, I think, uh, this is uh, the fourth largest uh, oil trader. They are based in Geneva. And I was like, look, how can I contact someone which is like so high above me? I mean, the guy is a, a billionaire, I'm pretty sure. And who am I? You know, I'm, I'm a guy that do jokes on, on YouTube. So I'm no one. So I'm like, oh, how can I provide some type of value or whatever to, to him? So my idea is like, okay, if I do like the boot in the box, at least the guy can say like, uh, uh, that was funny or whatever. So it's a little bit value. You see, uh, he had some good times. Like, what, what the fuck with this guy? At least he's in made it laugh. So anyway, go watch the video. But you know that there's like a lot of way to provide value. And maybe this is not monetary value or something. Uh, but it's just like a good time or whatever. So then uh, I'm going to give you like other uh, examples. So this guy is German. So he is a master of doing that. He always connect with people. Or he's a master connector and providing by providing value first. And this is why I think uh, German will do well whatever he does in his life. So and basically he came at me and he said, look, I mean, I've, I've checked your uh, courses and I see that you don't have a, um, uh, a part about the late time calculation. It's quite important. If you can, if you want, I can do that for you. I mean, I can record the video, explain the late time calculation and so on. I'm like, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> Yes, do it. And now, um, even today, German uh, sent me a WhatsApp message, so we are still in contact. So um, yeah, it worked. He, he, he gave value first. And this is the same with by all those guys that are related one way or another with the shipping and commodity academy. They all started with uh, giving value. So Caribbean uh, wrote like a blog post. Lyon, uh, Lyon, I think, uh, I think did the same. I don't really remember what he sent to me first, but it was also it was also lending with value. And about basically, I was like, look, Damien, your website is shit. I will redesign it uh, for free. So they all uh, came with value first. And this is why we are still in, uh, in contact today. And uh, on that note, Leon, I don't know if you're watching this, but we have the call after, after this live. Anyway, um, and then yeah, something that I wanted to, 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 to show you how we, you can uh, provide value to someone that you don't know. So here I'm in the middle of uh, reading this uh, book. Uh, it's a very interesting book, uh, Voltrush, The Winners and Losers in the Race of Go, Go Green. Uh, is in the race to go green. Very, very interesting book. Uh, it speaks about like nickel, cobalt, lithium, the battery metals, the batteries, and so on. Very cool. Uh, and I was like, oh, maybe I, maybe I should like uh, I try to have the, the author to come on a live show like this. Uh, but how, how can I do that? I mean, I, I'm basically no one, and it's not like... Uh, I mean, I'm not a fucking uh, star on YouTube or whatever. So how can I do that? But, so what I, I did, look, I will try to share my screen. Hold on a second. Uh, share screen, beam. Uh, puff, puff, share. Okay, do you see? You should see my screen. Okay, so basically what I did is I did a little tweet uh, about lithium and so on. And then I tagged the guy. So this is the author. Basically, I said, like, by the way, I'm currently reading uh, Volt Rush, blah, blah, blah. It's a very good book, and I really think so. And I tagged the guy and said that this book is really great. So he answered me on LinkedIn. Oh, thank you. So now, I, you know, he start, maybe he, does, he will not remember me or whatever, but I, I can reply to his tweet. I did that, like, this morning. And I said, oh, thank you. Thank you a lot, Henry. What about coming on my show, on my live show uh, on YouTube to speak about your book? So you see, I provided value first by... Um, uh, tweeting uh, something about lithium and then say that his book is really good. He said, thank you. And now I have like uh, the first, uh, let's say the, the door is a little bit open and I can try to have him uh, on the show. So that's, and you see my, my, my Twitter account, if you, this is shit. You see, I have like two, 2,000 seat, oh, fuck. I have like uh, 206 uh, followers. So this is not even like I, I, <laughs> I have something or something like this. So anyway, up here we go. So that, that's it. You see, there is like always a way to connect with people and by providing value first. Uh, and then you can do the ask or whatever, the, the introduction or the call or whatever. Um, next. Next, let's speak about inbound. So what we have seen is now how you can contact. You can target people to contact them, to have them in your network. And now, how can you make people come at you? So inbound is a thousand times more powerful. Of course, you need both if you want to have a great network. But inbound is really interesting because it helps you to get uh, people that are at the end tail. 
So if you know about the distribution curve, uh, uh, with, a, with a good inbound strategy, you can get really people that wouldn't know you, wouldn't even need that, they need, wouldn't even know that they need to speak with you to, to, to have them comment you. So basically to have an inbound strategy, I'm really sorry, but you need to have a personal brand on you on on the web so i know for for a lot of you personal brand means like uh i don't know like the kardashian of dwayne johnson or, or whatever i mean it's a bit of that but it, not really i mean it don't worry it's not like about posting uh, about yourself in front of a very expensive car like you can see uh, these are pictures of me in front of uh, a very expensive car or me like doing uh, ex extreme uh, physical fit uh, extreme physical stuff <laughs> like yeah, this is a, a pictures of me running uh, at a race as you can see i'm extremely in shape and i even don't look like myself like it's i mean i look like my fat brother or something like this <laughs> anyway so my point is uh you don't need to to do that kind of stuff when i said when i speak about personal friend i don't mean that i don't speak about doing that kind of stuff but what you need to do, basically, is you need to show some kind of expertise and you need to, um, to display this expertise on a social media. So I will give you some examples. Um, so personal brand. So first, you need to speak to pick a social media. I'm sorry. This is where people spend their time. So you need to be where people spend their fucking time. So for my side, when they speak about the Shipping Community Academy, I'm on YouTube. When I speak about uh, all the stuff, um, about uh, my, my other companies and so on, uh, I do that on LinkedIn. So this is where I think that there is like the most um, uh, people that care about those topics. So first you need to, to pick a social media. Then you need to pick a niche. What are you going to speak about? Because um, it's very, uh, you, this is this is what is tough with social media. It's like you can't speak about anything and everything because people won't follow you. I mean, people don't fucking care about uh, you. So if you pick the right niche, for instance, I don't know, you love speaking about uh, plastic recycling, or about the uh, uh, soya bean uh, in East Africa or whatever, um, you you need to in your Twitter link in description is broken. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I will change that. Um, uh, yeah, so you need to speak the, the right niche and the, by the right niche, I mean a very specific one. So it could be like soya bean uh, in East Africa, uh, recycling uh, plastic uh, or whatever, but you need to speak something extremely precise and you need to only speak about it on at least at the beginning when you have a bigger following and people start to know you, you can shudder it a bit but at first you need to be extremely specific the internet is extremely noisy there is a lot of people out there but so you need to find like a hundred people that really like what to do what to speak about and then you can extend then uh you need to be consistent you need to post consistently uh, for, for instance, I'm starting to have to post two, two, two times a week on LinkedIn, uh, and uh, I will. I've started. I've started to do YouTube uh, one video every other the week, and now I'm going to do one video a week. But you really need to be consistent because to be good, you need to have uh, reps, and to have reps, you need to post or you need to do so. Very difficult uh, to be consistent, but this is the key. If you do that one year or for like what, if you post 1,000 video or 100 video of, or you post 100 posts, you write 100 posts, you will be better <laughs> at the end. But it takes time and you need to be consistent. And it's especially difficult that the, the um, uh, it, it's very, a very slow, gang, slow grind until it picks up. Uh, and uh, then yeah, you need to share valuable information. So try to, to don't, don't, don't do useless platitude like you can see on linkedin this is so fucking bad like people speak about things that you i mean you want to throw up when you see it so just share valuable information maybe information that you have gathered or study that you have done and so on at the beginning if you have like no experience just share you what you are learning about and so on and this is enough um and and if you want to be better at uh, youtube uh, at linkedin I follow these uh, courses, the, this guy, this uh, guy, just Justin Welsh. Follow also him on LinkedIn, and he has a courses. I think it's 150 bucks. There is a link in the description below, and it really helped me to have a, a LinkedIn strategy. And uh, and yeah, and what about that? Um, uh, this LinkedIn strategy, it, it's very very powerful because I made 
a lot, a lot of connection. People came at me and asked a really, um, and with really interesting project, uh, interesting connection, and so on. So, and this is those type of people that I would never imagine that they were interested to connect with me and so on. It's just because they think that I said something uh, interesting on LinkedIn and so on, or they like the YouTube video and whatever. So, you never imagine uh, who. I mean, who, who is watching behind the screen? Just to give you uh, just an idea on LinkedIn, uh, I will show you something on my profile. Um, bim, bim, bim. Oh, fuck, it's really dirty. Um, one more second. Let's see. So, uh, do. Fuck. Do you see it or not? Yeah, so. Uh, anyway, so this is the number of impression of my post. So number of impression, I don't know exactly what it's in, but let's say that only 10% of the people uh, read uh, compared to the number of impression. So here I have a post, the last post that I did this morning, 2,000 impression. Let's say that only 200 people read. It's still 200 people. And how would you be able to network with 200 people if that were the real life? If you need to speak uh, with 200 people, and this is this is a lot. So this gives you leverage. So, and you don't need to be like uh, fucking clever. So usually when I write, uh, write on LinkedIn, I ask questions. I sound a little bit, I try to sound a little bit stupid. So people uh, really want to correct me or whatever. So play on that, no problem. So um, here, LinkedIn. So I have 2,000 impression on this post, the last post. Here I have 3,000 impression. Here, 8,000 impression. So le let's say that only 10% of uh, that are people that really read. It's still 200 people that read it, 300 people that read it, 800 people that read it. I mean, and uh, 10,000 impression on this link, on this, pro, on this uh, post. So let's like, 1,000 people that read the post. I mean, how would you be able to network with that amount of people? Uh, it's, it's impossible in real life. So uh, the, social the social media really gives you like leverage to extend your, 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 your personal brand, to extend who you are to a lot of people. So I really, really encourage you to start. And it takes time. So start now and be better uh, over the year. Here, uh, here are two um, interesting cases. So here, this is a guy, uh, Jizen from Malaysia. I think I had him on a call. I don't really remember. But anyway, so he's, he, he, he tweets every day about palm oil. He tweets about shit about palm oil every, every fucking day. And now it's been like a year that he's doing so. You can see it doesn't have like a lot of uh, sub. But still, it's been doing that for a year. Next year, it's been doing that. And maybe ten in, in three years, five years, going to be like the top guy, the most follow guy on the on Twitter about palm oil. So this is this is how it works. Uh, here it's Marco Tiola, so it's uh, a student, and he started this podcast. So uh, then he got a job at Cargill, and Cargill asked him to stop that. That I think it's fucking stupid because. Uh, the, I mean, this would be great for Kagil and for Marco if we could carry on with this podcast, but we started a podcast. So you see, man, this uh, this shit, it, it really weighs. Um, yeah, and the personal brand is also a way to get uh, lucky. So I, I don't want to go too deep uh, into the luck theory, but if you... Ah, yeah. The best book in, in the world, The Almanac of Naval Valmico, you, you need to read it. Anyway, so in this book, there is like, it spoke about luck. I think it's in this book. Yeah. There's like four types of luck. There's like dumb luck when you win the lottery. There's like luck by hustling. So you do a lot of a lot of things. And one time you get lucky because you keep working. There is luck because you are prepared. Um, this is like me now. I've, I've seen so many deals that when I see a good deal, I know why it's a good deal. So I've been extremely prepared. And then there is a luck that finds you. So uh, luck that finds you is... I think the example in, in this book is like, let's say that you are the best uh, a treasure hunter and you can do scuba diving, go to the sea and so on to find like treasures. And if someone is looking for a treasure or know that there's like an old ship and they need a specialist, they are going to get you because you are so good at what you do and you are maybe the only the only guy that do that, someone will find you. And this is when Lux finds you. So I'm not at that level well, so I'm not that known and I don't have... A skill which is that I mean a bunch of skills which is so specific to me that Lux refines really it, but I'm working toward that. And you can get lucky when people know you. This is why you need to have your personal brand. And my personal brand is more like you need to display your skill or your personality online. As most of you maybe have like no fucking personalities, 
uh, maybe just display your skill. So to sum up, the offline, uh, the offline way, the best way, so the hack is to create you uh, the association or to be the node of, uh, of a group. Do that, you, it will reward you. Um, the online way, so there is a, a, a way that to do it with, with the outbound is you need to provide value first. And with the inbound is you need to show your expertise online. You need to do it consistently. And uh, then you'll see wonderful things happen, but it takes years. So that's it for me. Oof, uh, that was a long one. Hopefully I was not too boring. So now let's do the Q&A. So RM13 was the book. Yeah, yes. Best book on earth. So I really, really encourage you to read. And I think there is like a free version, a PDF online or something like this. Here we go. So now uh, if you have like any question, you can ask um, uh, in the chat. If you want to speak with me, we can do that also. Um, if you have like question about uh, networking, uh, just, yeah, just write them. And if you have any other question about the trading, let's do it. Thanks for the two ebooks you emailed yesterday. It was it is quite interesting. Ah, yes, the two ebooks are um, the free PDF. Um, uh, I think if you are on the the Shipping and Commodity Academy email list, you will uh, get this email. It's in the sequence. Thirty people on the live. So I think. Uh, yeah, this is a fucking win. I think this is uh, the top of uh, people uh, live on. I mean, I think it should be like 30 people. Thanks a lot, all of you, for being here. I really try to do my best to um, <laughs> to be entertaining and to to bring you value. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for being here. It's it's really cool. Uh, what languages would you say are the most important to learn? Cover the West, the the weed, weedest. Nest of trading community. We just what the fuck does it mean? W I D. <laughs> I think I think the the most important uh, language is uh, is still uh, Chinese. Man, you need to speak Mandarin. If you speak Mandarin, when well, you will never have to to find a jobs. Jobs will find you. But this is also maybe the most uh, difficult uh, languages to speak. But language to speak. So, but yeah, Chinese for sure. Not Cantonese, uh, Mandarin. I'm going to start working uh, exp as a coffee trader next month. Yeah, good luck. I started to deep dive interest in commodity with you. Thanks, thanks, Luke. Um, if you want to, uh, if you are going to start working as a coffee trader, hold on a second. I think I have. Oh. Oh fuck! I, I think I had a book. Um, it's from Jonathan Kingsman, uh, from Cup Coffee to Cup or Cup to Coffee. I don't remember the name of the book, but I think I, I gifted it to someone. This is why I don't have it here. But um, look, look uh, from Cup to Coffee or Coffee to Cup, Jonathan Kingsman. Very, very good book uh, about uh, coffee trading. Ah, well, just, yeah. Do, well, no problem. I mean, you see my English is crap. Yeah, Chinese for sure. Yeah, Gary. <laughs> He's a CTA, uh, legit, uh, commodity trade, uh, the Commodity Trading Association. Yeah, it's a, a, a legit thing. And no, I'm not a member. It's because, I mean, I pay for Google. So I don't, uh, I'm not a member, but yeah. Um, it's a, again, usually in those uh, networking group, you will find a lot of uh, junior people 
because those are the ones that need to, <laughs> to network. Uh, the older one, I mean, they have family, they have shit to do, so they are not really there. But yeah, of course, it's a, it's a good thing. I, I went there to the last one with a friend. Crop to crop. Yep, yep. Could sound like a, a porn movie or something like that. <laughs> okay. um, what do you think about those things? Uh, I don't know. I've never used it. Uh, I think if it's true, it's shit. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's my theory. But um, if you want to have like a good website, I think a friend of mine what, um, works a lot with Datamine. And the other one is, I don't remember, but Datamine. Um, uh, uh, D A T A. Oh, okay, okay. I, I will write in the chat. It's uh, that mine. Um, so basically, here. Yeah. Um, so the this is a website. Of course, you need to pay. But what you can basically do is you type you type the HS code of the product, and then you will see all the importer or the exporter. I mean, what is stated on the BL of a lot of country. So you can. Uh, or the notify so you can directly see who is buying what. So yeah, when, when I started as a trader, we did not have those type of uh, of, um, of, uh, <laughs> of software that aggregate all the information. So it was not that easy. Damien, do you need prior experience in shipping? To I, I don't think so. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't I, I I don't think so. Or, or you can lie. If you need to, you can lie. <laughs> but but uh, I, don't, I don't think you need uh, you need to um, to have experience in shipping. Any update on the DRC quality? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So um, as we speak. Um, my team is on is in uh, Lubombashi DRC. Uh, I think the uh, one guy just arrived this morning, and another one, Adriano, is going there. I think will be there in two days. So yeah, things are moving on uh, on the DRC. We are going to set up our sourcing base uh, in Lubombashi, and, uh, and yeah, I mean we'll see. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Thanks to you, Andreas. No, yeah, I mean, every freaking day, so. <laughs> so yeah. I love, I, I you go, uh, so contact me, man. go for, go work for us. Because huh? we would like to have people that want to stay in Lubumbashi for like years. <laughs> usually, uh, usually European, after a few months in Lubumbashi, they, they want to go back home, you know? It's, <laughs> Uh, yeah, like this is a. I mean, it's not that dangerous from what I understood, but it's it's a small city in the middle of Africa. So yeah, like no cinema. Or, yeah, not really, not much entertainment. Yeah, it's rough there. Yeah, rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean. But this is also why we went to DRC because we had. Um, it was one of the most complicated places to to business with. To, so, and uh, we I feel like that uh, we have uh, the team to to handle this complexity, and also one of the guy, one of the the, the partner of the company that we would start, um, is Congolese. So he's a French Congolese, and he lived in Switzerland. So yeah, he's the one that is going to 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 live in Mombashi. So yeah, because you've never been there, this is why you <laughs> you're saying that. <laughs> But again, it's not to to um, to say something bad about Lumumbashi or about DRC. But this is one of the uh, most complicated country to to live with, uh, with. and uh, there's a lot of reason for that. So it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, but Gary, you have a lot of operation and you have a lot of people uh, that works for you in Lumumbashi. Um, I think I had, I had a friend that just came back from Lumumbashi and he met a, an engineer, I think a mining engineer uh, of Glencore, and he told me that they were paid like so fucking well, so, I mean, the pay was like uh, so high, and uh, basically the guy worked there like uh, six weeks, 
and then you had three weeks uh, home, then six weeks, then three weeks home, or something like this. So it was like really, really good condition. But this is what you need to do if you want to have like people to, that work there. And also, it's those huge mines, like the one that have like the Chinese mine, the Trafira, Benkro, or, or, or even I mean, all those big mines. They have like this is a small city. I mean, that they have like inside the the mine. So you don't really live in Mumbashi. You live like in in this compound. And another friend that uh, I think he he, he, he worked for uh, he worked for Trafigura and he, he stayed two or three years I think in Congo. Um, and yeah, after two three years, like, like I mean, I, mean <laughs> I need to fucking uh, go out. I mean, I had to to do something else. I mean, I can't, I can't stay there. How important in a company profile in? in I don't really understand your question. Can you rephrase it? I mean, follow the Shipping and Commodity Academy, link in the description below. And seriously, <laughs> this is my best advice. I mean, because this is the advice that it works. But if you uh, start by reading book, like the World for Sales, uh, Commodity Conversation, uh, all those books. I mean, I think those books you can find on, on the website, Shipping and Commodity Academy, slash uh, blogs or something like this. Um, and yeah, start with books. Jude, man, I, I still don't understand the question. <laughs> am, I, am I the only one? Am I the only one like completely stupid? <laughs> Do you need to have a company profile when you network? But um, yeah, I mean, if it's your company, yeah, but even no, I'm not really sure that you need a company profile. I mean, usually, this is uh, if you have a company profile or something that explains what you do, it's because you, you cannot convey uh, like trust uh, with your counterparty when you speak with them. And if you cannot convey trust and people uh, need to know more about what you are doing because they, they don't really understand or whatever, it, it's a big issue. Usually, when I speak with someone, I, I mean, they, they would kind of quite quickly trust me or have the confidence that I know what I'm talking about, just the way I speak. So, so yeah, but also it comes with experience. So, but I'm not really sure to understand your question again. Maybe I'm fucking stupid. Right? <laughs> um, as a junior trader or someone interested in community training, should, should focus be on physical training on paper training is a good start. I, I think uh, it's fucking useless to learn a paper training because um, uh, Algorit, Edge Fund are doing that better than you. So uh, for humans, they still a good uh, edge on the physical side, but otherwise paper is, you know. I know more people that lost money on paper than uh, anything, that anywhere else. And yeah, it could be a lot, it could be a lot. Like uh, for instance, if, um, um, yeah, for instance, uh, there's a Christmas party that I've been invited of companies that do the Christmas party and they want me to come. Uh, and you know, I need to take the plane and so on just for a night. Um, but I, I will pay, I will pay because I know it's important to be there and it's important to shake hands, especially those moments where you have Christmas party, people drink, it's good time. Uh, if you want to deepen relationship, you, you need to, to, sp to spend money for sure, for, for sure. Um, in French, uh, uh, looks like um, I think the, the book about Mark Rich and uh, the world for sale. Uh, you need to find French translation. I'm pretty sure that you can find French translation. But Abolo, still, man, you need to learn English if you want to be in the community trading. So look at me. I have like a thick French accent. Uh, people don't really understand uh, <laughs> and I, uh, when I speak, but still, man, <laughs> so, uh, I make it work. So um, don't really need to have like a really good uh, level, just good enough. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, in your case, I would read an uh, English book. Oh, fuck. Dude, um, in 15 years of trading, I've never done a deal with the LOI. So 
if people do LOI, it's, it's mean that they don't trust you. So it means that I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be a deal. And if you want to secure your commission, um, I mean, they, I mean, you, there will be no deal, or you will not be able to secure your commission because as a as a pure broker, it's impossible to secure the commission. The only way is to make the side agreement or commission blah 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 commission contract. But if the guy don't give a shit about you and don't really have that, you don't have enough money to legally attack the guy to get your commission, you won't be able to secure it. So. My advice to you is try, try to find a way that you can provide enough value to all the people in parties so they they have no incentive to bypass you. How, many, uh, how much did you put into your money? 50K? Okay, so basically, guy, so Joy, I don't want to be an ass, uh, uh, but uh, you put 50k in a company and you think that you are going to deal with natural gas that needs, I don't know, and uh, what is the lowest uh, cargo that you can do in natural gas? Maybe in that gas, maybe like a container or some, either like those propane container or what, weird container that you can do. Maybe you start doing that, but how do you think that someone will lend you millions? To uh, for, for just so just you can do a deal. It, it, I I don't understand. I don't understand the, how you think, Joy. Just maybe there's something that I'm missing here. But uh, uh, yeah, maybe you can do a few trucks of uh, natural gas. Maybe that's completely possible. Yeah, this, this is why I created the Shipping and Commodity Academy course. Link in the description below. Yeah, man. But, <laughs> ah, yeah, that's right. You uh, you are from um, Zambia or Tanzania, if I remember well. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Congo, there's a lot of problems in, in Congo. And power outrage is one only only one of them. Any recommendation on what to read on ESG and the mining industry as a person who is coming from a thicker background and want to be in mining on the ESG side? In your... Dude, I I cannot, I, I don't really have like have enough knowledge. And this is funny because now we are, I'm, I'm working on an ESG fund or whatever. Um, and the ESG is quite very difficult to find good information. So um, because it's tough, there's like no real metrics or there's a taxonomy that is going to come, I guess, from the European Union right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very, very, comp I, I cannot really recommend you anything at that moment. I don't know, sorry. What would you say the bit out? Yeah, I mean, if you're in Canada, I'm pretty sure these are a lot. Uh, Brussels uh, in Vancouver or in Toronto, I mean, the Brussels industry is huge, man. So they, I don't know where you are looking at, but uh, uh, I'm sure there is stuff for sure. Uh, look at association and so on. And maybe um, in what is the best avenue? I would say face to face is the best avenue, but uh, online is a way that you can get most leverage. But watch the review. I mean, watch the recording of the session. At the beginning, I'm speaking about that for like 25 minutes. If you want to pitch an idea to a traders and there are like any templates, or how do you have an issue? Yeah, man. So the way you, you do it, usually it's um, first you take the shipping and community academic course because there is like, <laughs> uh, it gives you an idea how to present a fucking trade. But anyway, so basically, it's, uh, I mean, you need to have like, 15, 20 information, um, the product, the quality of the product, who is buying a payment term of the buyers, payment term of the sellers, uh, and terms of uh, buying at co-terms, selling in co-terms, how much time you need the money, um, who are with the logistic company, uh, if there is a warehousing, um, how is going to be the documentation of the collateral uh, on the trade. I mean, there's yeah, maybe 20 data points that you need to, to, to present uh, if you want to pitch a deal to one of the traders. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thanks a lot. Yeah, so uh, Gary is... So, yeah, Gary, actually, the you, you are kind of right. But the problem is, like, who want to put capital for a trading company? Man? Yeah, 
I mean, okay. So, I mean, as a broker, it's very difficult to create enough value. So maybe you can't, you just can't do it. But for instance, value of a, what a trader could do is like he's going to prepare from, from the from the producer and he's going to, to give 60 days for the buyer to pay. So if you do that, if you do that, you provide value to the to the supplier because you, you do like a prepayment and you provide value to the to your client because you let him 60 days or 90 days to pay for the good. This is one way to provide value as a trader. And if you do that, you won't get bypass because obviously the producer wants to get uh, his prepayment and the supply and the client wants to have credit. So you, you won't get bypass if you do that. But again, if you are only a broker, your value is shipment unless you find something that I don't know yet. Um, but this is a sad and hard truth that I'm giving you here. Being a broker, we are at the edge of internet. With WhatsApp, you can speak with whatever, whoever on the on, on earth. Like, it's no value in being a broker. And this is fucking funny, uh, speaking of that. Every week, I'm, I have like someone emailing me or, or saying like, look, Damien, I have a very good source to, to buy soya bean, sugar, crude oil or whatever. And I'm like, dude, man, why, why would I need you, man? If I want to buy soya bean, I would go on Google. I would put soya bean producer, Brazil, blah, 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 blah. I will look at the website. I will call the guys. Why would I need you? It's make no fucking sense. Uh, okay, I don't want to be like a, an ass, but you, you need to understand that this is a marketplace now. And even if you get LOI from someone, and okay, if you get LOI, it's probably not a real guy. It's probably also a broker that think doing the LOI is the way to do business, which is not. And it's, uh, I don't want, to, again, I don't want to be an asshole, but uh, uh, the marketplace is really tight right now. We are in 2022. I mean, everyone knows everyone. I mean, it's really easy to take your phone. And with WhatsApp, it's cost zero to call someone. So what, what do you think is your value by just finding people on the internet behind your screen and thinking that you are going to make money like this? Okay, um, so what Gary is speaking is that, yes, there are like private equity group that back um, trading firm, for sure. And, uh, but you need to understand that this is an extremely big private equity group. They have billions under management and they want to back commodity, physical commodity trading firm, but because for them, it's a way to diversify their port portfolio and to get exposure to the commodity sector um, a, a different way to get exposure to the commodity sector. So they have billions on the management and they're like, look what we can do to to, uh, to diversify and we will still want to have like a commodity exposure. So then those private equity guys, it would make sense to put, uh, I don't know, 50 million, 100 million, whatever, uh, behind um, uh, a bunch of senior traders that know the market very well and that want to start a company. So, and actually the private equity world is the only road if you want to start a a big company with at least 100 million in equity, then you can get uh, to the bank and get credit line. This is the only road, unless you have like a very rich uncle that is willing to put like 100 million uh, in your company. So this is this is uh, for sure, for sure, this is a way. Uh, but there isn't a lot of <laughs> private equity of that side that would be interesting to have that type of exposure. But yes, it works. But when you read people like, again, I'm sorry about you, Joy, but Joy, that ask this question, do you really think that Joy is a type of guy that can go to a private equity firm and ask for 100 million to, to start his company? But but again, the, um, and also you need to, un and again, about, about this type, just um, you need to understand that um, having shares of a commodity trading firm, it's, I mean, there is like the return on your money is not that high compared to what you could do with that money or so. This is, this is the truth. So, yeah, I saw that that Tesla is looking to buy a share of Gencross. So, um, uh, yeah, they want to, I guess, secure cobalt, uh, lithium, and so on. But I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's really weird. I mean, I think Tesla is, um, would be better to do GV uh, with mines directly 
than to with Glencore. I think Glencore is like a 10 lawsuit about like bribing guys in Africa or stuff like stuff like that. So um it seems I don't know. I would I'm I don't think this is going to happen, but maybe maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Well uh Elon Musk to be honest. And Elon Musk is from South Africa and Gary, you are also from South Africa. So maybe the Islam uh, the African blood connection that I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, you you should give your, your comment about that deal. But I think Elon is is busy with Twitter right now, so yeah, yeah. So it seems completely insane to me. Yeah. yeah, this is I mean I mean for sure um Tesla is speaking with Gencar. For sure, for sure. I mean, this is the biggest supplier of all those battery metals. But um, maybe the procurement guy of Tesla said, look, guy, we can buy your shares just because they wanted to close a deal and they bullshitted the grades. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, a lot of South, uh, people from South Africa. I love the country, by the way. Really love the country. Probably going to go there uh, beginning of next year. Okay, guys, so um, five more minutes um, if you want to ask me anything and so on. And then I have a call with Leon. No, so um, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for being here. We were like, we are still 28 after like one hour of uh, live. Um, so, uh, so thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, I really try to do my best to be a bit more prepared, to uh, be, be a bit more interesting, to make more jokes, to be more entertaining. Because I think this is the only way that people are really learn is, I mean, you need to be entertaining or whatever. So, I will try to to do my best to yeah to be a better host. Um. Yeah, the only the investment bank area. Exactly. Okay, guys. So, love you all. Ciao, ciao. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel, to like the video, and do all the good stuff. Uh, ciao, ciao.